Hello everyone, James's Car Craze here. Another car video for you guys. It's a Mercedes. But see if you can guess what one I'm in just by the interior. I'll give you a few seconds. No, if you said S-Class, you're wrong. This is actually the Mercedes C-Class, the 300 AMG line premium model. A lot of people have seen pictures of the interior of this car and gone, hang on a minute, that can't be right, you're in an S-Class. In actual fact, no, this is the C-Class, which has been dubbed many things. Some people are calling it the poor man's S-Class. Some people are calling it an S-Class for poor people, same thing. Some people are now wondering how good the interior of the next S-Class must be to beat this. I mean, I've only been in the vehicle for a few minutes and uh, it's it makes me feel so special. I mean, it's a Mercedes, it should do. But um, you'll be learning about this car as I learn about it today. I haven't actually done my research. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a little tour of the vehicle as if you were in the driving seat now. Um, so I have driven the vehicle. It is very lovely to drive. Very, very, very smooth. The steering wheel is as light as anything. I mean, you have to trust. I mean, some. I was driving down the road and I actually panicked in case the steering wheel wasn't actually connected to the front wheels. But there we go. So in the driving seat, the new C-Class, you can see you have the 11.9 inch central screen taken directly from the S-Class. The S-Class has exactly the same screen as this. And it's the first thing you see when you get into the vehicle. Compared to interiors of C-Classes before, this is up there. Um, this central screen will be standard in all of the C-Class models. Um, I believe it will be in the E-Class models as well, uh, which is very, very good. Personally, I, I quite like having a central screen there um, rather than way up here in the dash. Uh, you still have some actual buttons down there, which is quite nice. Um, they are some you have to press, some are touch sensitive like the volume control uh, and your dynamic driving modes down there. But otherwise, still, still have physical buttons. Your steering wheel, you do press them, but they're also touch sensitive things like your volume control and your um, cruise control uh, limiter down there. So let's um, let's have a quick look. Um, first, we're at the um, screen that's right in front of you. This will this can display almost anything on the vehicle. Let's turn it on first. So when you turn on the vehicle, this will be your central screen. Uh, you've this is the default screen. So you've got your miles an hour. Or kilometers if you're American on the left you have your revs on the right and then your miles in the middle when you're driving along you will have your miles per gallon uh, miles driven in the trip in the middle there nice thing is about this you can change your dials you can change your display in the middle uh, I shall get on how to do that in just a minute so guys I'm just going to now uh, just show, quickly show you how you change your central display so on the steering wheel here you have this you've got the okay you've got the back and you've got the home button if you click the home button you have numerous options to choose from let's start right from the very very left so if you can see in the middle it says understated so i think that's the very discreet oh you've got a clock on there as well that's nice um, as I said, you're, you're learning about this vehicle as I learn. I've done a tiny bit of research to know what to press to show you. Um, but really, in terms of exactly what's on here, I'm, I'm learning with you. Um, so again, this is quite nice. You, the, um, if you watch videos of Range Rovers and some Jaguars, the numbers only appear as you accelerate into that range. So for example here, I don't... I don't think you'll be able to see that too well but obviously you've got the dial on zero because we're not moving we're stationary you've got 20 up there but the rest of the dial is blank so when you accelerate obviously the dial moves up the numbers appear as you go up the miles an hour range which is quite nice again sort of a Range Rover 
Jaguar feel, the clock in the corner. I'm not sure, I haven't actually tried it on, on this screen driving. Um, I haven't got the kits to do a point of view driving at the moment, um, but subscribe and hopefully when I do get the full on kit, I'll be able to show you these screens in motion. Um, but normally that's where your rev counter would go. I mean, do you really know? I mean, you can, this, this vehicle is default automatic, but you do have the paddles. Where are they on the side here? Plus, minus, you can drive it in paddle shift mode, which I like to do because I still like to have the freedom of being able to change gear. Um, that that dial might change if you put it into manual mode. Uh, but again, I haven't actually tried that yet. But if I don't do it in this video, I'll do it in another video at some point, sometime. Let's have a look. So if you scroll to the right, you have your sport mode there. You should be able to see that. So being in, this doesn't activate sport mode this is just your sport style screen and to activate sport mode you have to go through the dynamics setting in the car which i shall get to in a moment uh, but it is a very sporty display you've got your g-forces for anyone that wants to know uh, what you're going through around roundabouts around corners um, you've got your newton meters of power um, i don't know what newton meter um, are in comparison to anything else. Uh, you've got your RPM at the bottom. When you're stationary, it's six at about six six fifty RPM. Let's uh, try get around there. Uh, you have your brake horsepower on there, so you know exactly how much horsepower you've got, uh, and just some more engine data. But because the ignition's on, the car's off, so there's no data to show at the moment. What I did know. You've got EQ charge down there. I believe that this vehicle actually has mild electronically assist um, features on it. I noticed when I was braking, it was putting charge back into the battery. I don't believe you can drive this on electric only like some. Um, I think the assistance is there. Um, like the kinetic recovery system in a LaFerrari, where you it recovers energy that would be wasted but and then deploys it. Uh, when you really need it. I think that might be more of a sport feature, but I could be wrong. As I said, I haven't done my full-on homework on this vehicle. Um, if you have one of these vehicles, or if you're um, a car nerd like me that's actually done their homework, let me know in the comments below. Um, can this be driven on electric? Is it just electric assistance? Right, let's go back onto here. So, again, that's your classic Mercedes view, you'd you'd see that as soon as you walk in the vehicle. You can have your navigation on the top screen, which is quite nice. Um, I haven't driven it with the navigation on the front screen in front of the driver. I've only done it on the central display. Um, I wonder how you see your... Ah, I was about to say, I wonder how you see your miles an hour. Your miles an hour is up there. I don't think you'll be able to see your revs. Um, but again, if you're driving in automatic, you don't need to look at your revs. Um, if you are driving in manual mode, you can just listen to the sound of the engine to know when to when to change gear. Uh, so that will, when you set the sat nav destination, uh, that will appear on there. It's just worth noting as well that the sat nav system on this is it's a very very nice system. Um, it has lane assist as well, so it tells you what lanes you need to be in, which is quite good if you don't know the area. Next setting, you've got your assistance here. So this vehicle has a number of systems. You've got, um, I know it's got the lane assist system. So there's cameras that read the road and read where the lines are in the road. So if you go slightly over, um, it, it will give you some very light steering assistance to get you back in that lane. It doesn't stop you changing the lane completely, um, but it does just give you that little bit of assistance to make sure that you are near enough dead center in the middle of your lane all that will appear on here and um, you've got your pre-collision warning assists that will all appear on there again once i get the equipment to do a point of view driving i'll try and get point of views while the vehicle is in motion of all of these settings uh, so again subscribe and hopefully very very soon once i get the equipment to do that i shall show you 
And then the last thing on here, you have your service information. The vehicle is off at the moment, but when the vehicle is on, I mean, it's the same on some BMW systems. You can see your tire pressures, your coolant level, um, time since it was last service, etc., etc., And of course, all your warning messages on there as well. So that's quite a nice handy gadget to have. Um, if you switch modes for any reason while you're driving and you want to go back to your central screen, that little arrow, where is it? There it is. Press that. You go back to your default screen. Right, now I'm going to take you through the central screen, which is the sort of the main feature in this C-Class. Again, I had to get out and look at the back of the car to, rem to remind myself I'm in a C-Class, not an S-Class. Um, for those, um, you know, if, if I was in an S-Class, you'd have the square... Um, the rectangle style vents in there, not the, they're not square, they're sort of roundish, ovalish, um, very very nice feel actually, they sort of click into place for the central, uh, for the central flow, that's quite nice. But anyway, yeah, back to the screen, um, sorry it's a bit smudged, <laughs> I have been playing with it. Um, so that's your default central screen there, that's what will appear when you turn the vehicle on and you turn the system on. You have your navigation there, just press on navigation, it will say where to, um, flick that up, and then click where to. To go home, just press the little home button there. Um, some people press that. If you want to go back to your central screen, just press the home button in there. Obviously, if your phone's connected, you have the phone connectivity. Uh, mine's not connected because I don't want the distraction whilst driving. Radio choices, I've got it off. Um, no, I haven't. Um, obviously, this will tune to any DAB radio, FM radio. Um, really, really nice speaker system in here because this is the Premium Plus model. I believe it does have a system that's better than the standard. But again, <laughs> not having done my full-on homework, um, I can't elaborate that uh, much much further. But um, here we go. We've got. Lola's theme by the Shapeshifters playing on there today. That's pretty cool. Going back on there. Uh, swipe to the left. Um, that's a Tinder thing, isn't it? Media, so if you've got your phone connected, you can play your media via your phone. Apps, what have we got on app? Mercedes Me, so that's like your profile for the car. You can set up all your Features, save them, so if someone else drives the car and changes all your settings, log on to the Mercedes Me on your profile, puts back all your settings um, into plays gallery. You see, I... I <laughs> um, apps, are there any more? No, that's something completely different. We'll go, we'll come to that later. That's that's it um, for apps. Um, I'm sure there's video, there's detailed videos on the on the Mercedes Me system. I'm not going to go through it today because I, I, that that's something I haven't actually played with in advance before the video, so I don't want to keep going um 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 and you guys get bored. Um, so let's go back. Comfort, I like this. Um, I've been playing with this, so <laughs> do, 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 do. there you go. Um, let's start at seat. Um, so you got you can adjust the seats using your adjustments on the side there, or you can um, you can do it on here, which is quite cool. So um, let's go position seats automatically. This is quite a good feature. You can put in your height, and the car, based on algorithms, will decide the best driving position for your height. I'm not five foot three. I'm six foot five, but. I haven't played with this because I want the full manual settings on the car there. Um, but if you're five foot three, or <laughs> which I mean, the last person was probably five foot three who drove this vehicle, um, seat position. Oh, I've just pressed it and now I'm being squeezed. There we go. I'm, actually, I'm, 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 I'm going to try this while you guys are on there. So set it to six foot five. Oh, inches, centimeters, which is 195 centimeters. If I press start position, it's now adjusting the seats automatically. 
and the steering wheel. There we go. I, I don't know if you saw that move, but that's now adjusted. That, according to the car's data, that's giving me the best driving position for a guy that's abnormally long. Cool. Well, I didn't know that. Um, seat kinetics. No idea what that is. Driver. No, nope, that doesn't do anything. Oh, hang on. No, it did. It did something in the back. I don't know. Um, ambient lighting. Like this is, ah, oh, this is S class style stuff. Um, so you can have st you've got sixty four different colors to choose from in here. You can't. It's a. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. In there, you might be able to sit. More in the back. Oh, there we go. You can see it more in the back. So you've got sort of a blue colour there. And then you can go, I don't know, purpley, red, orange, yellow. You've got your greens there. Uh, that's blue. Or you can go onto the multicolour. So you've got your um, monochrome sliding control for your interior lighting. That does all your interior lighting down here. So it's quite light, so you can't see it that well. But you've got all your interior lighting here, your interior lighting under there, your interior lighting around. Oh, it's quite bright now. Around there, you've got it down here. You've got it in the vents. Again, it's quite light. You can't see it on the vents. You've got it down there by your automatic lighting control. I said you've got it on both sides at the back. It's oh, <laughs> and you've even got it up here um, on your top controls on there. If you want a multicoloured experience, rather than just one solid colour, you have a number of different choices here. I've had mine on... No, I haven't. I've had, I quite like it on that one. It sort of ch it change, it's like a colour changing mood, which is quite cool. Uh, unless you're ambient lighting, then just to change... You know, you can change the um, brightness on there. You can set different parts of the car to different colours, I believe. That's what the Link Zone things is. Actually, no, sorry, Link Zones is just... So the brightness is the same throughout the vehicle. Effects. Um, see, I did do my uh, research on this. So warning when exiting. So if the car detects a warning, the ambient lighting goes red. Um, climate. So that's to do with your air conditioning and your climate control. The colder you set your climate control, the bluer the lights get in the middle. And uh, the, obviously the hotter you set it, the more red that the interior lighting goes, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I believe that's only on the actual air vents. Um, I haven't tested it on the rest of the vehicle yet, but we'll. Um, I'll, I'll have a play of that later on, and I'll try and remember to film it. We'll go back. I believe that was all the comfort settings. Yeah, that was all the comfort settings. Um, vehicle settings. Uh, I'm not going to play too much of these because it's not my vehicle. Um, so you've got all your... <laughs> yeah, the vehicle's off at the moment. Um, let's turn the vehicle on. It's getting quite warm in here. Uh, to, just to turn the vehicle on, the ignition's already on. Foot on the brake. Start the car. Vehicle comes on. I'm just going to set the air conditioning because it's quite warm in here. Yeah, so, so your this this lower part of the screen is always there. Uh, when you drive the vehicle, so you don't have to go into settings while you're driving um, to try and change the temperature controls. Um, I'm going to do it on 19 today, but on a low feed, uh, fan setting, so hopefully it doesn't interfere with the audio. Dynamic low beam, um, so that adjusts the brightness and the range and everything of the uh, low beam. This has got obviously the data, the LED daytime running lights, spotlight. Um, no idea what that, oh god, there we go, <laughs> um, spotlight, I believe that does something, um, low, oh, ah, automatic low bit, so if you've got your lights on full, um, the car will detect if you've got another driver coming, um, and go back to low beam, um, if you need to, so you've got your low high beam assist. Exterior and exterior lighting. Uh -huh. So that's for your puddle lights on the door mirrors. Um, you can also set how long you want the exterior lights to stay on. So if you go home and you've got no street lights, the car lights will stay on. 
um, for as long as you need them to when you lock the car so you can actually see where you're going which is quite cool and then you've got edit settings for interior light yeah that just takes you back to your interior lighting setting there assistance you've got all your assistant systems on here I'm leaving them all on so active brake assist um, so that will brake the vehicle in a situation automatically if it feels that it needs braking intervention active lane keeping assist I've talked about that that sort of keeps you in the um, middle of the lane and the blind spot assist so it's not on at the moment um, you probably can't see that in the door mirror in the bottom right you've got a little warning triangle um, that just tells you that you've got a vehicle in your blind spot assistance speed limit assist so that will this function displays detected yeah so that will so the speed limit uh, the cameras in the car will detect the speed limit like it has here um, 60 mile an hour down this stretch apparently but you can't really go 60 miles an hour down there but there we go uh, so that's that Ooh. what else we got down here traffic light view ah so that will read um, I believe that's to do with the stop start system that's on this so that will detect you know if the lights red or green and um, if it's red um, I believe it, it, it stops the engine um, stops I mean that's mainstream on most modern vehicles now I mean even my Fiesta has that so um, I mean that's not anything special to Mercedes but um, it's quite a feature has to sort of lower the miles per gallon a little bit attention assist um, not 100% what that is um, that might be the car reading I think I, I might be wrong, comment below uh, if I am, but that might be um, the car mon monitoring the driver, so the driver, so if I was showing signs of falling asleep it would bong and tell me things. Camera, um, so open camera cover, what does this do? I don't know what I've just done there. Uh, but yeah, this has a 360 degree camera system when you're reversing which is quite nice actually can I there we go so it's using the camera system and you get like a bird's eye view of where I am and which is quite cool it's pretty accurate um, I won't go into details with that now um, I'll go back to that activation in R ah right yeah so when you put it in reverse it automatically engages the camera Parking, parking space and camera emit, yep, so that shows you the parking spaces either side. Warning tones, that's your beep, 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 you know, when you're close to crashing into something. Vehicle. Um, winter tyre limit. Don't know what that does. Uh, manual shifting, yeah, so um, it's default automatic. If you want manual shifting, uh, turn that on and you can shift on the panels in there. Automatic filling station. Ah, okay, yeah. So it will automatically search for the nearest filling stations, uh, which is quite cool. Comfort, um, easy entry and exit. Yep. Yeah, so when you turn the vehicle off, the steering wheel will go right in and up. Um, the seat will go back a bit as well. So you've actually got plenty of room to get out without snagging your leg on the steering wheel. Open and close. Vehicle protection. Interior motion sensor. Two open. Ah, so that's your. Um, uh, I believe that might be something to do with your parking sensors, automatic locking. So when you drive above a certain speed, the doors will lock. So if someone tries to open a door, it won't when you're doing 70 mile an hour. Um, opening height limiter. Don't know what that is. I don't want to play with it. Dynamic select. Oh, here we go. Uh, drive. So you've got eco, comfort. So I'm going to put it in eco. Let's go eco. Steering. Um, sport, I, it'll give you better steering response, but even in comfort mode, I mean, it's so light. I mean, I could do it with my little, even my little, no, but I don't, I don't want to do that. Don't want to reset the trip thing. Um, ESP, your traction control. I'm leaving that on, <laughs> um, given this is nearly a 300 horsepower vehicle. Um, that's pretty... Pretty much it. Um, I don't know how unresponsive the throttle will be in eco mode. Um, I might do a five things I like, five things I hate video about this thing, and um, I don't have permission to 
do a full-on review in terms of like a Top Gear review, uh, not being my vehicle, but I'll do a video where I just go through my experiences of driving the car. System, hey Mercedes, so that's like Siri in an iPhone or... Oh. Hello, I'm Mercedes, your voice assistant. Would you like to know more about what I can do for you? No. Please tell me your destination. Uh, cancel. So you say Mercedes and that comes on. Um, <laughs> not going to play with any of that. Um, display, so you can change the brightness of your central display and your display on there. Uh, graphic goodies, so that will be all your cool graphics on there. Control elements. Acoustic feedback. I think that might be where it plays an artificial sound in the cockpit. I did notice what sounded like an artificial sporty engine noise. I could be wrong. Again, comment below. I mean, if you work for Mercedes, you'll probably like stop this now. <laughs> um, info, you can, you've got the owner's manual on there um, as well. So if you don't have the actual paper manual, you can do that. Um, that's the settings. Info, um, this is quite cool. So this gives you your fuel and charge consumption. This must have electric assistance. I mean, it wouldn't have the charge function on there, but there we go. So fuel is that miles per gallon. So I reached, yeah, 36.5 miles per gallon on a nearly 30 mile trip. That's not too bad. Um, charge, what's that in? I believe that's the state of the charge for the motor, if it has an electric motor in there. Uh, vehicle. It's quite cool. So this tells you the position of your brake pedal. So if I press the brake pedal, it tells me how hard I'm pressing the brake. If I press the accelerator, it tells me where my accelerator position is. If I move the steering wheel, it tells me the angle of the steering wheel and the angle of attack of the wheel, which is quite cool. Engine. Um, again, your Newton meters of torque, it has a lot of torque, um, exact torque figures, can't remember. Uh, this is the C300 model. So the numbers on the back, I didn't know this until quite recently. I thought the numbers on the back, so like C200, C300, etc. I thought that was in relation to spec, kind of like the BMW systems, um, so the, not systems, what do you call them? You know, the sort of the hierarchy. Um, but on the Mercedes, it's actually the power of the vehicle. So um, there we go. Uh, it says 290 on there, pff, near enough 300. So if I press the accelerator, we're not moving, so you're not going to get the true horsepower. But there you go, it gives you your torque and your horsepower on there. You've got your coolant and your levels at the bottom there as well. I think that pretty much covers your basic systems there. Um, smartphone integration, that I'm sure that's for like your CarPlay and your Android Auto, whatever it's called these days. There we go. Um, again, just at the bottom there, you've got your climate controls. They stay there no matter what. So if you press something or, you know, if you do this. Um, and here we go. So this little car button down there, press that. You get these function things on. When you turn the vehicle on, your lane keep assist is automatically on. You can turn that off, gives you a little warning. You can turn it on like that. I have it turned off because I don't want to rely too much on tech. It's good to have it, but there we go. Manual shifting, you can turn that on, get a nice little graphic on there. Um, I'm just gonna turn it off for now. What else have we got? Interior protection, so that's your um, driver awareness system. Um, everything you've got on there, that's all settings. That just then takes you to the main settings of the vehicle. Yeah, I believe that's everything. That's everything on there. Um, let's have another look at something else of the vehicle. So there we go, guys. So that's just a, I say short. The last segment went on for about twenty minutes. Um, that's really um, all you need to know in terms of the info um, infotainment system. Uh, get it right. Um, I've shown you your central screen. 
I've shown you pretty much the cool features on this car, which are, I mean, it's not S-Class level of gadgets, but it's near enough. I mean, if you can't afford an S-Class, get one of these. Um, I, I love it. I've fallen in love. Um, I like the materials. Okay, the material down here. Do the scratch test. Mm. It's It serves a purpose, the plastic bit, but other, everything else is just, oh. Um, I mean, even the start-stop button, that's quite a nice picture there. And the fact that the door control, the, um, not door controls, the seat controls, are on the side there, on that shiny black. That's just amazing. I love that. Um, again, I've shown you, so um, I'm, tr I'm trying to get, because the last car I drove was, was a BMW and the um, cruise control and everything is on that side and your media controls are on that side. Um, so I was trying to do this and changing volumes when actually it's on the other side. So on the Mercedes C-Class, your media controls, your phone controls, trying to get it to focus. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> on the um, left there. I said all your speed limiter, um, your cruise control, that's all on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Um, down here, just a few little bits that I haven't told you about. Um, let's get it to focus. That's your, it's on auto so that lights on automatic, but you can, you can change it for a manual preference. Storage, got your storage in there. Uh, press that button, or storage in there. Obviously you've got your glove box. It's... Uh, <laughs> what's that? Is that a shelf? Yeah. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to get a pizza in there, but we should be alright for all the other small things. I think that's it, guys. Um, there's another quick look at the back. Leg room is good. Um, unless you're sitting behind me of a six foot five driver, then you're pretty much screwed for legroom. <laughs> um, but yeah, well done, Mercedes. This is, you know, I think you've shot yourself in the foot with this one, and you're going to have to come up with a fantastic next S class interior um, if you're going to use this screen in the lower, lower range models. Um, but well done. Um, <laughs> Whether in the very, very far future we'll see a C-Class with the massive hyper screen that you get in the EQS. Um, but for now, this is a very special interior. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. As I said, I'll try and do some more videos on this for the exterior. Um, at the moment, didn't have permission to do an exterior review. Uh, but the interior is where I want my channel to sort of focus. I want to do in-depth reviews. Um, of the infotainment systems um, and your screens on there because the interior is where you're going to spend your time driving the car um, so again like comment subscribe um, those more car videos to come hope you like let me know what you think in the comments and we'll see you soon thank you very much for watching see you all the next time